Hello everyone. Today we are back with another type of unsupervised machine learning, which is association. If you follow this video till end, then you should know how the association work, what are the different type of algos in the association, and lastly, you will be able to build the model for all the type of association. So before we start, here are a few details about Datamonk. In Datamonk, we help students to prepare for different type of interviews and also provide study material on SQL, Python, R, statistics, case studies, and machine learning. If you want to know more about the Datamon, then you can visit our website www.thedatamon.com. So first, let us start with the unsupervised machine learning association. So first of all, what do you mean by unsupervised machine learning? So for unsupervised machine learning, as the name suggests, it do not need any type of supervision to learn about the data. It means that you don't have to explicitly train them by telling them this is the input X and this is the output Y. Basically, in unsupervised machine learning, it is all about finding the pattern in data by just passing full data to the algorithm where we do not need any training and testing sample. So there are three type of unsupervised machine learning, clustering, dimension reduction, and association. In our playlist, we have already made the video on clustering and dimension reduction. So today we will discuss about what do you mean by association. So for association, it is about finding out the pattern in the customer purchase behavior and generating the purchase recommendation. So basically, this algo help to build the recommendation system. Like if a user purchases item A, then which item they will likely purchase along with it. So most important algorithm used in the association are a priori, eclair, and fp growth. So today we will look into all these three type of algorithms and find how they work and then we will build the model in all these type. So first of all, what do you mean by association? So for association, association rule is an unsupervised learning where algorithm try to learn without a teacher as data are not labeled. In association rule, it is a descriptive, not the predictive method, generally used to discover interesting relationship hidden in the dataset. So basically, first we will discover the relationship and then we will recommend to our user. So this relationship are usually represented in the form of rules and the frequent item dataset. So to know about the association, we first need to know how does the association rule mining works? So for the association rule mining works, association rule mining is a concept which try to find the patterns or rules in the purchasing behavior of the shopper. In the association, first we write the rule like support, confidence and lift. So let us take one example for association rule mining work. So if a shopper purchases a mobile phone, he is likely to purchase a mobile phone cover. So the seller will recommend them some. So they will increase the chance of selling the mobile phone cover since it is the most required at the time of the phone purchases. One can take many critical decisions based on these tools like storing products nearby in the shelves of a store to increase the chances of them getting purchased together or recommending some products to the online shopper based on their historical transaction. As you all know about Amazon on Netflix, in Amazon, in Amazon, when we buy any product, then we get notification or pop up that many customers buy another product with that product together. Or in Netflix, when we watch any movies or series, then we get a separate column for our recommendation. Like if the person has watched this series, then the next series they will watch is this. So that's the working of the association. So there are three major algorithms in association. First is a priori, second is eclet, and third is FP growth. So basically all these algorithms are based on the simple counting. So what do you mean by this? So in association, counting the number of times a product is purchased and calculating a few metrics known as our support, confidence and lift. So with the help of support, confidence and lift, we can make recommendation to the users. So let us look at one example to see what do you mean by support, confidence and lift. So this is our transaction data set. In this, there are six transactions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and in all the transactions there are some items which the user have purchased. Like in transaction 1, user has purchased only milk. In transaction 2, user has purchased milk, bread and saffron. And in transaction 3, user has purchased milk and bread and so on. So from this we will look into what do you mean by support, 
confidence and lift so for support the number of times a product or multiple product together are purchased out of all the transaction so like if we want to find the support of the milk then we will see how many times the milk have been purchased so like 1 2 3 and 4 and then we have to divide it out of the total transaction so now we will look into the total number of transaction which is 6 so we will divide 4 by 6 to get the support of the milk so therefore we will get 0.66 as the support of our milk so as you can see we are getting support for milk as 4 by 6 or 0.66 similarly when we want support of two or more item then we will see like total number of times they are bought together out of total transaction so for example if we want to see the support of milk and bread then we will see how many times they are bought together so like in transaction 2 and transaction 3 we have bought milk and bread together so we will divide them by the total number of transaction so we will do calculation as 2 by 6 which means 0.33 so for support of milk and bread is our 2 by 6 so the rule of support is that if the support of the rule is high then that means that the combination of product is sold very frequently so it is only logical that if it is greater than 0.5 then that means that the product have been purchased more than 50% of time so now we will look into what do you mean by confidence so for confidence it means that the number of time a second product is purchased after the purchase of the first product let us take one example for the confidence like if we have to find the confidence of milk by bread so it means that the purchase of milk is leading to the purchase of the bread so how do we calculate this it is calculated as how many times a milk and bread are present together divided by how many times milk is present in all the transaction so as you can see in this the confidence for milk and bread will be total number of times milk and bread are bought together so it will be two times in transaction 2 and transaction 3 divided by total number of times milk is bought so it will be in transaction 1 transaction 2 transaction 3 and transaction 6 so our calculation for confidence of milk and bread will be 2 by 4 therefore you can see in this our confidence for milk and bread is 2 by 4 this can be interpreted as if a person purchases a milk then 50% of the times they also purchases a bread hence it is an important rule to act upon and it will be wise to keep bread near the milk tray so now you should know about support and the confidence so we will look into how to differentiate between support versus confidence so for support versus confidence support gives an idea about the frequency of the rule like if support is high then that means that that product is sold frequently however the importance of the rule can be judged by the confidence factor since it help us to show that the purchase of a product a leads to the purchase of the product b like if the confidence is high then we know that for sure if a person purchases product a then he will purchase product b as well so as we have already seen the calculation for our support in milk and bread and confidence in milk and bread so it was 2 by 6 and 2 by 4 hence our support is low but the confidence is high so this will be so this will be acceptable but if the support is high and the confidence is low then it is not acceptable because it means that milk and bread are purchased together but bread is not purchased with the milk so after support and the confidence we will look into what do you mean by lift so for lift it is defined as the ratio of two product being purchased together to the support of both the product purchased independently so from this definition we can derive our formula so it will be like lift a to b equal to support of a and b divided by support of a into support of b so based on this above formula we can say that if lift is greater than 1 then it means that if one product is purchased then the other is likely to be purchased and if it is less than 1 it means that if one product is purchased then the other is not likely to be purchased and if lift is equal to 1 then that means that there is no association between the two products so from above data set we can see the one example like lift of milk to bread so it will be like support of milk and bread divided by support of milk into support of bread so support of milk and bread was over 2 by 6 and the support of milk was over 4 by 6 and support of bread was our 
1 by 3. So putting the value together into our formula, we can get lift of milk to bed equal to 1.51. Hence, we can say that milk and bed are likely to be purchased together. In general term, the higher the lift, the higher the association is between the product and more actionable the rule is. So after finding the support and the confidence, our main focus is on lift. So from lift, we can easily recommend the product to our customers. So now we have an understanding of the building block of association rule mining. So let us discuss the algorithm one by one. So for association, our first algorithm was a priori algorithm. So in a priori algorithm, this algorithm calculate the support, confidence and lift for all the possible combination of products and then look into which satisfy a minimum threshold of support and confidence, hence reducing the computation required. Otherwise, there will be too many combinations for the products. So basically, in this, we assign the value to our minimum threshold of support and confidence to reduce the combination in our data set. This activity is performed in two major steps. First is to find out the frequent combination of item called item sets which satisfy the minimum support threshold. And second is to generate association from frequent item set rules based on the minimum confidence threshold. This above style of finding association rule is based on the breadth first search. Hence, by using the breadth first search or BFS, we need to scan our database multiple times. And due to this reason, our a priori algorithm is very slow. So it is often criticized for not being able to handle very large data set efficiently. So now let us look into the working of our a priori. So for a priori, our first step is to find the frequency of our item set. So it is an iterative process with pruning involved in each step. So let us take an example from this data set only. So to explain it, so to explain this step, we will discuss in, in more detail. So we start with an one item at a time and keep increasing the items in our item set. For example, for item 1, we start finding item sets of one product each and then compute the support for each item set and remove those who do not satisfy the minimum support threshold. Same for item 2, we find the combination of two products as our item set and then compute the support of each item set and remove those who do not satisfy our minimum support threshold. So in this example, how we will do this? So let's take a situation. So first we will find the support of only one item. Let's take our milk. So we will find the support of the milk in our total data set and then look if support of milk satisfy the minimum support threshold or not. If it satisfies, then we will keep this in our data set. And if it does not satisfy the minimum support threshold, then we will neglect that item. So for so after so after taking only one item, we will take two items like milk and bread and, and compare the support of milk and bread to the minimum support threshold and do the same as we have done in the milk. So we will keep increasing the combination of our product in our item set and keep comparing it with the minimum support threshold. So after our step one, what will be our step two? So in step two, we will create the rules from our item set. So it is also an iterative process with some elimination involved in each step. So take an example, like if an item set contains four elements, milk, bread, cold drink, and wafers, then we will follow some steps by starting with only one item in our RHS and keep decreasing the element in our LHS. To formulate and evaluate new rules, we will find the confidence of rule of milk bread according to the wafers. So if it is more than the minimum confidence threshold, then we will keep it, otherwise reject it. And after that, we will find the confidence of milk and bread to the cording and the wafer. And again, we will compare it to the minimum confidence threshold and, and again, and again, compare and again compare it with the minimum confidence threshold. So after that, as you can see in this, like in our first case, it was three items to one. Then afterward, it was two item to one. Then it is one item to three. So we will follow the same pattern with different combination to compare it with the minimum confidence threshold. So in the end, we will be left with those rules which satisfy the minimum support and the confidence threshold. So now you should know how the a priori algorithm works so we will look into another type of algorithm in our association, which is eclat algorithm. So for eclat algorithm, 
Eclat algorithm stands for equivalence class transformation. The basic idea is the same as the a priori algorithm, but the Eclat algorithm addresses and improves two major issues that was in our a priori algorithm. So first of all, you should know that in our Eclat, we use DFS, which is depth first search. But in our a priori, we were using our BFS which was breadth first search. While scanning the transaction database, that is done by defining vertical database, which is based on our ID list. So by using our DFS, this approach reduces the number of database scans needed to find all the rules. Hence, we can use Eclat on our large dataset. Eclat also uses any one of the bottom-up approach or top-down approach or hybrid search approaches to find our sub lattices. So now we know why Eclat algorithm was introduced after the a priori algorithm. So we will look into the two major steps from which Eclat generate association rules. So it will be like our step one is that first of all we will find out the combination of item called item set which satisfy the minimum support threshold and then we will generate association rule from our frequent item set based on our minimum confidence threshold. So it will be same as our a priori but the key difference is that how the Eclat find the frequent item set. Like here, Eclat is more efficient than a priori. So let us look how this step one work to find the frequent combination of items called item set. So this begin by finding those combination of items which contain the maximum number of items along all other item sets and has the maximum frequency in the transaction database. So they are known as maximum frequent item sets. So in this data set, our maximum frequent item set will be our milk. So as you can see, milk has the higher frequency like 1, 2, 3 and 4. So the frequency of the milk will be 4. And after that, all other item sets are our subset of this item set. Hence, these are the starting point, starting big lattice. So in this, our milk will be our starting point and all our item sets will be the subset of our milk. So let us take an example. If our maximal frequent item set has four items like milk, bread, coding, and wafers. Then the algorithm will start creating smaller subset which satisfy minimum support threshold. For example, first we will reduce the data set from our four items to our three items and then create all the combinations. So it will be like milk, bread, coding, or milk, bread, wafers, or bread, coding, wafers. Then we will reduce it to two and then one and etc. So this is how we make the combination of the items. Then after creating the combination of our item set, we will generate the association rule using the minimum confidence threshold. So it will be same like our a priori algorithm. In this like our item set has four elements which are milk, bread, quadrant and wafers. Then we will start with only one item in the RHS and keep decreasing the element in the LHS to formulate and evaluate new rules. So as you can see, this is exactly same as our a priori algorithm. We have started with 3, 2, 1, then 2, 2, 2, then 1, 2, 3, and so on with different combination. So in the end, we are left with those rules which satisfy the minimum support and the confidence threshold. So to differ, Eclat with the a priori, our first step is different in which we create the item sets. So from this difference, our Eclat is much better than our a priori algorithm. So after that, we will look into the last type of algorithm in our association, which is one of the most important algorithm for association, and it is our FP growth algorithm. So for FP growth algorithm, it stands for frequent pattern growth. This algorithm is faster than a priori, but not suitable for large data set due to higher memory requirement. So basically, if our data set is small, then we should use our FP growth algorithm. So like in a priori and Eclat, FP growth also generate rules in our two steps. First will be to find out the frequent combination of items called item set, which require our minimum support threshold. And the second will be generate association rule from frequent item set based on the minimum confidence threshold. But the main difference between a priori and FP growth is the way FP growth finds frequent item sets. So in FP growth, it uses a special tree data structure known as our FP tree that store the frequent patterns at one place. This tree helps us to reduce the need for scanning database dramatically. In only two scans, all the frequent item sets are found. Once all the frequent item sets are found, then the rules are generated using the tree. So let's examine how FP growth works 
using the sample transaction in a grocery store. So our first step is to find the frequent combination of item called items. And in this step, our first step will be to find out the support of every item in the transaction dataset and arrange them in decreasing order. Like if two items have the same support, then arrange them alphabetically. So as you can see in this figure, we find the support for every item. So as for milk, it is four, and for bread, it is two, for saffron, it is one, and for corn, it is three. And we have arranged them in decreasing order. As you can see, milk four, then bread two, and then saffron one, same as in this milk 4, ordering 3, and then wafer 2. So after finding the support order and arranging them in decreasing order, we will choose only those items which are above our minimum support threshold. So let us take minimum support as equal to 2. So we will neglect that item which has support less than 2. So as you can see in our saffron, our support order is 1. Therefore, we will neglect this item from our data set. So as you can see, saffron got eliminated and we will get only our milk equal to 4 coding equal to 3, bread equal to 2, and wafers equal to 2. And in this, you can also see that we have arranged it alphabetically, like bread first and then wafer. So after eliminating and arranging the in decreasing order of support, we will now create our FP tree. So for FP tree, how do we create it? There are some few simple steps. So as for T, it always needs a root node. So in the FP tree, our root node will be always null. And after creating our root node, we will create our leaf node. So how do we create our leaf node from this support order? So for the first leaf, we will take that item which has maximum support order. So in this, we will take our milk. So after choosing the milk, we will create it as our leaf node. Then after leaf node, we will see our transaction two. So in transaction two, we have milk and bread. Therefore, we will move from this first milk and then bread and then increase the frequency of milk and bread by one. So now it should be milk equal to two and bread equal to one. Then after that, we will look into our transaction three, which is milk and bread again. Therefore, now we will again increase the frequency of milk by one and bread by one. So it will be milk equal to three and bread equal to two. Then after that, we will look into our transaction four. So it is quadrant and wafers. So for quadrants and wafer, we will move again from our null node. So we will create our new leaf node, which will be quadrant and then wafer, and then assign the frequency to quadrant equal to one and wafer equal to one. Then after that, we will look into our transaction five. So as you can see in our transaction five, it is quadrant. Therefore, we will move from leaf node to the quadrant and increase the frequency of the coding by one. So it will be coding equal to two and wafer equal to one. Then after that, we will see into our last transaction, which is six. And in last transaction, it is milk, coding and wafer. Therefore, we'll move from our leaf node to first our milk. Then we will see if milk has any leaf node, which is coding. So there was no leaf node that was our coding. Hence, we have created our new leaf node from milk, which is coding. And then after coding, we have created another leaf node which is our wafer. So now you can see this is our FPT for our transaction dataset. And in transaction dataset, our milk will be 4. Milk equal to 3 is by mistake. It will be milk equal to 4. As we have increased the frequency of milk, coding, and wafer. Hence, milk will also get increased. So by looking into FPT, it helps us to count the number of ways to reach an item in the tree. Like if we have to reach the item bread, we have only one way possible but it is repeated two times like milk to bread and milk to bread again. Hence our transaction will be milk to bread. And to reach the milk, we start from the root node. Hence it is an empty path. So we can get straight to the milk. And for to reach our wafer, we have two way possible. One is to buy milk, then coding, then wafer. And another is to buy coding and then wafer. So after generating the FPT, we will generate our frequent item set. And to generate our frequent item set, it is to combine the items with its path and make sure that all the combination are taken into account. Like if we are reaching to wafers, we are milk to cold drink. So the item data set will be like wafer milk, wafer cold drink and milk wafer cold drink. So now we have generated our frequent item set. So our step two will be same as to generate the association rule using the minimum confidence threshold. So as you can see, we have taken the same example like four element milk, bread, coding, wafer, and then move from RHS to LHS by decreasing one element in the LHS. So as you can see in this, 
first we will find the confidence of three to one item and then compare it with the minimum confidence threshold same for another item for two to two and then compare it with the minimum confidence threshold so we will repeat this step for every combination in our item set and in the end we are left with those roots which satisfy the minimum support and the confidence threshold so now you should know how the association works and how all the algorithms in association work so now we will build the model from scratch and see the code for all the algorithms so for our model our problem statement is that we have to create a recommendation model which can recommend the item on the basis of your purchases so first we will make the model of a priori algorithm and to make the model of a priori algorithm we have to install mlx10 library so to install mlx10 we have written the code pip install mlx10 and then after installing the mlx10 we will import two libraries numpy and panda to import our data and then after importing numpy and pandas we will import our a priori and association from our mlxt 10 dot frequent patterns so to build any model our first step should be to load the data so we have loaded the data from our local desktop with the help of our read excel function and this is the head of our data in this there are invoice number stock code description mean the name of the product the quantity order invoice date unit price customer id and the country so they are the column of our data then for the shape of our data there are 5 lakhs 41,909 rows and 8 columns so first of all we will explore our data for different regions of transaction so we want the unique value of the country so we will write the code of data.country.unique so we got the unique value of our countries so from this we can see that in this all companies our order has been delivered so after seeing the unique value of the countries first step to build our model is to clean the data so now we will clean our data and to clean our data first we have written the data.info to check the data type and the non-null values in our data so as you can see our data type of every column and the non-null values of every column so in this you can also see that there are some missing value like customer id or descriptions so now we will treat them so first of all we will strip the extra spaces in the description as it was written with the space bar so we will strip them then after that we will treat our missing data so we have used the doc nut to remove the null values in our invoice number and then after that we have used the invoice number dot s type to string means that we will convert our data type which is object to our string type then after that we will drop all the transaction which were done on credit so we have written our statement which will delete all the invoice number which are on credit so our cleaning of the data has been done so now we will split our data according to the region of transaction so in this we have taken four countries to split our data and we will further work on this four country only so as you can see we have split our data into france uk portuguese and sweden so to split our data first we have checked that it belong to france or not then we have grouped the data of invoice number and description using the group by and then set our data to invoice number so as you can see we have done the same in every country france uk portugal and sweden then after that we will use the hot encoding function to make the data suitable for our concerned libraries like for a priori library so we have encoded our data using the hot encode function then we have encoded our data for countries france uk portugal and sweden so now our data is ready for our model so we will see how to run a priori in our python so to run a priori in our python we will build our model and to build the a priori model we have already seen that we need two steps first is to define the item sets and second is to create the association rule based on the minimum threshold value for the confidence so for the first step to create the item set we need three hyperparameter first is our data second is our minimum support as we need to check our data on the basis of the minimum support and then there is use column name equal to two means that we will make the column names then after building the model now our item sets are ready for the data so now we will build the rules according to the minimum threshold of the confidence and to build the rules we have used the association rules where we have sent our item sets and our metric is equal to lift and minimum threshold will be equal to one so now our rules has been created so now we will print our rules so now you can see this is our rule for a priori in this we have first antecedent 
then consequent, then antecedent support, then consequent support, and then the overall support, and then confidence, then lift, and then leverage. So from this output, it can be seen that paper cup and the paper plates are bought together in France. This is because the France have a culture of having a get together with their friends and family at least once a week. Also, since the France government has banned the use of the plastic in the country, the people have to purchase the paper-based alternative. Therefore, we can see that paper items are in hot in the France. So after that, we will look into the Portugal data. The code will be same. First, we will create the item set and then we will create the rules using the same minimum support and the minimum threshold and from this data you can also analyze that the different sets and the color pencils are bought together these two products typically belong to the primary school going kids and these two products are required by children in school to carry their lunch and for creative work respectively and hence are logically make sense to be paired together so from this, we can easily pair our knickknack tin and our color pencil for the customers. Then after that, we'll make the rules for the Sweden country. So our code will be same. Our minimum support will be 0.5 and our confidence threshold will be 1. And first of all, we will create our item sets, then our rules. So from this data, we can see that boys and girls cutlery are paired together. And this makes practical sense because when a parent goes shopping for cutlery, for his or her children, he or she would want the product to be little customized according to the kid wishes. So from this we can see that the lift is equal to 18. Then that means that antecedent and consequent are brought together. So that's all for the a priori algorithm. Now we will see how to run Eclat in our Python. So to run Eclat in our Python, we have created our new data set. And you can see our new data set in which we have milk, onion, nutmeg, kidney beans, x and yogurt for transaction one this one for transaction two this for transaction three and this for transaction four and this for transaction five so first of all we will create the data frame for this data set so this is our data frame for transaction one transaction two transaction three transaction four transaction five and transaction six so after creating the data frame as you have already seen in our a priori algorithm we have to encode our data so we have used the transaction encoder to encode our data so from this statement we have encoded our data then after that our data is ready for our model so to build association model first we need item sets so from this statement we have built the item sets in which minimum support is equal to 0.6 and use column is equal to 2. So as you can see, these are our item set in which they are grouped together with respect to the items in our data. So as you can see, we have also calculated the support for our data. So now after creating the item set for our data, we will create the association rule based on the minimum threshold of the confidence. So from this, we have built the rules for our data set in which our minimum threshold is equal to 0.5 and we have used metric is equal to support as we are doing the eclat algo so now you can see the rule for our data so this is the rule for our data in which we have antecedent consequent and support we only need the antecedent and consequent and support for our data so we will look into this data which we have which we have filtered three columns for our data so after creating the algorithm in our eclat we will see how to run the fp growth in our python so to run the fp growth in our python so first we have to install our library py fp growth so we have installed our library py fp growth using the pip install function then after that we have taken another data set as if we use our previous data set our item set and our roots will be very large Therefore, we have taken small data set in this. So as you can see, this is our grocery data set. And from this, we will repeat the same step. First, we have to find the item set. And then we have to create the rules for our data. So to find the item set, we have used the minimum support threshold is equal to 0.5. So now you can see our item set for our data set. So you can see that we have grouped the data. And according to the minimum support threshold, we have printed our data. So they are the item set of our data set then after then after creating the item sets we will create the rules according to the confidence threshold so as you can see from this statement generate association rule we are creating our rules so you can see these are our rules in which this is our antecedent and this is our consequent and this is the value of the confidence so now you should be able to write the code for a priori eclat and 
FP growth and also should not the working of all these three algorithm. So that's all for the video. Thank you for your time. Hope you like the video. For more amazing content and more algorithm type of videos, do like and share the video.